Greetings, ladies and gentlemen of the Earth. It's Rock and Roll Spot Connection with my review of Shaft 2019. So, why am I call why am I adding the year to the movie? Because there are two other movies named Shaft that are actually about the same character. Or characters. Yeah. It, there was Shaft, Shaft in the 70s, which had two sequels. And there was Shaft in 2000, starring Samuel L. Jackson as John Shaft, who, you know, and it featured briefly Richard Roundtree reprising his role from the, from the, the previous three movies as John Shaft. And then you have this one, Chez John Shaft Jr., the son of... Samuel L. Jackson's John Shaft. So, the movie is about, well, John Shaft, John Shaft, and John Shaft Jr. eventually working a case together. Um, quick thoughts, it's a fun and actually kind of really socially conscious uh, action movie that uh, evokes the exploitation films of old very well. Uh, the cast of note, we've got Samuel L. Jackson as John Shaft, a former NYPD PD officer turned private eye. Takes after his father quite a bit. Prefers to do things the old-fashioned way, which can be also read as almost to totally illegal way. We've got Jesse T. Usher as John J.J. Shaft Jr. Generally referred to either I mean, he has either J.J. or Jr. He's John Shaft's estranged son. A data, data analyst for the FBI. Doesn't really take after his father. Like, at all. Next up, we got Richard Roundtree as John Shaft. Retired P.I. and father of John Shaft. Pretended to be the younger Shaft's uncle for quite a long time. time. Still a Bad mother. I'll shut my mouth. Anyways, next up we got uh, Regina Hall as uh, Maya uh, Babanikos. Uh, he's Shaft. Or she's Shaft. Samuel Jackson Shaft. Well, the ex-wife of John Shaft and Junior's mother. Wants to keep her son out of the crazy... Out of the crazier parts of his father's life. Alexander Ship as Sasha Arias, uh, childhood friend of Junior, grew up to be a medical professional. I want to say an ER doctor. Um, she does work in a hospital. She did. Fi she does fix up Junior when he gets beat up. So, presumably doctor. But yeah, lives in the nice part of Brooklyn. But still carries a gun. Next, we got Matt Loria as Major Gary Cutworth, retired. Um, he's one of the co founders of the uh, Veterans Rehab Group Brothers Watching Brothers, friend of Kareem Hassan. Titus Welliver as Special Agent Vietti, Junior's boss of the FBI. He's not too fond of uh, at least how eager Junior is to make a name for himself in the, within the Bureau. Um, Cliff Method Man Smith as Freddie P. It's one of Shaft Street contacts. Isaac uh, DeBanacole as Piero Gordito Carrera, drug lord that Shaft's been after since the 80s. Ivan Jogia uh, yeah, as Karim Hassan, childhood friend of Junior, veteran, ex heroin addict, and co founder of Brothers Watching Brothers. And finally, we got Luna Lauren Velez as Benny Rodriguez, owner of a Puerto Rican supermarket in Harlem, supportive of all members of the community. There's a mean punch. All right, on the spoiler-free breakdown. So, the movie starts off in 1989. Um, Shaft, Samuel L. Jackson, and his wife uh, split up after a gunfight. Not between the two of them, but a gunfight... Gordito sends some goons after Shaft while he, he's in the car with his wife and their son. And so Maya leaves him. 
taking their son, John Shaft Jr., with her. Uh, we get a... Uh, Montage isn't the best way of putting it, but we kind of get this, you know, kind of, as the you know the years go by, we see bits and pieces, you know, birthdays, Christmas, graduate, you know, stuff like that, and the gifts that uh, Shaft gives his uh, head gave to his son. Um, we also get a, a very brief little bit from uh, the two thousand Shaft movie. Uh, with actually being labeled as 2001. But it, the, the main thing is just to show how Junior is different from his father. And then after he gets denied uh, a position on a, uh, a surveillance case, or a cyber surveillance case at, at the FBI, Junior reunites with two of his friends, Kareem and Sasha. Uh, however, the next day, Junior's mom calls him and tells him that Kareem has uh, died. After the funeral, Junior begins to investigate the death, and initially figuring, you know, hey, initially thinking, you know, no, you know, Kareem was clean. You know, he was a hair, he was a former heroin addict. You know, but he was clean. He was clean. He was fine. And he gets the toxicology report. Well, he through questionable means, and Sasha looks it over and informs him that, yeah, that, that's the amount of heroin in his body, you know, it, it, he couldn't have finished shooting it up before dying, or before overdosing. And, uh, okay, between, before Sasha makes the realization, Junior has a run-in in Harlem with a, uh, a drug dealer whose goons smack him around a little bit. So Sasha patches him up, and she, that's what she reads over the, the medical examiner's report, or the toxicology report. So then Junior realizes there's really only one person who can, who can help him with uh, the investigation. His father. So Shaft and Junior go out, go at, talk to the drug dealer, and who is uh, eventually coerced by the older Shaft to provide information on Kareem to Junior, verifying that the OD was intentional and also that Kareem hadn't been buying, hadn't been around in a while. You know, since he started, you know, since he got on with the, the Veterans Rehab Group, Brothers Watching Brothers, a running joke becoming that the group needs a new name. Um, they continue to pursue more leads, learning more about Kareem, uh, which eventually points them in the direction of a mosque, which, which is under investigation by the FBI, which is, and that investigation is the case that Junior was trying to get on at the beginning of the movie. Or bef the night before they go visit the mosque, Shaft takes Junior to a club to unwind and, you know, clear his head a bit. However, Junior parts a little too hard and ends up uh, hung over when he, his father, and Sasha go to check out the mosque and are quickly run out by the imam. Uh, so later on, Junior manages to hack into the mosque, mosque's computer files and discovers a half-million-dollar donation from a grocery store which he and Chaff visit. And Junior kind of gets smacked around by the owner. Later that night, Hitman tried to kill both Chaff and Junior separately, after which uh, Junior learns that the owner of the grocery store, related to the drug lord that Chaff has been trying to bring down since the 80s, ordered the hit. And you actually get a really cool uh, gunfight scene with uh, Junior and the Hitman going after him. He, he, which says he may not be a gun guy, but that doesn't mean he doesn't know how to shoot. So later on, Junior learns that Shaft only got involved because of the link to the drug lord and several his ties with his father. So Junior and Sasha acted on the evidence that uh, Junior and Shaft gathered. However, this leads to Sasha getting kidnapped, though 
Shaq, you're having a talk with uh, Junior's mom, goes to, goes to save Junior and gets his car shot up. But, uh, so the two men fences, and they decide to uh, go save Sasha, but first they got a pit stop to make. Shaft's father, the original John Shaft, who is mentioned, pretended to be Shaft's uncle for quite some time. Um, in the 2000 Shaft, Richard Roundtree referred to as Uncle Jay. So, yeah. I was actually depressed that they acknowledged that. But, yeah, they... Apparently, apparently Grandpa Shaft has uh, quite the arsenal, and they basically just, you know, fill up bags, get bulletproof vests, guns, and, yeah, they show down with the drug dealers and, and his uh, associates. So, the ups and downs. Right off the bat, I'm just going to say this, and I, I don't want to dig in another movie, but... 1989 John Shaft looks a lot better and more real than 1995 Nick Fury from Captain Marvel. Just saying. Um, it really has the same feel as the 70s black exploitation film, um, which I, I, I dug, because I like 70s black exploitation films. Um, lots of nods to Shaft and John, including some very meta ones. Um, at one point, one character mentions that he he's talking he's talking about Shaft and is promptly told to shut the fuck up. Um, well shot, amusingly written and acted. Um, the opening segment with uh, birthdays, you know, special occasions for for Junior and Junior's life. I think actually really set up the, set the character up pretty well. So that, you know, it, it establishes where, he's, where his arc begins, and so we can, be, we can see where, how it ends, and it makes sense. Um, so, so glad that this movie gave Richard Roundtree more to do than just be a reference to the first Shaft movie, or the first three Shaft movies, I should say. Because I, I swear, that was pretty much all he did in the uh, 2000 Shaft was basically just show up, you know, be mentioned as Uncle Jay. You know, and the original John Shaft and offers a few a job at his PI firm. You know, he doesn't get, he doesn't get involved in, he doesn't get as involved as he does in this one. Of course there are downs. Okay, so the movie, like I said, it's amusingly written, but the plot is really predictable. Um, the only thing that caught me by surprise was making Richard Roundtree Samuel L. Jackson's father. And even then, I should have seen that coming from a mile away. Um, the running joke about uh, Junior not being anything like his father gets really tired after a while. And, um... Yeah, that that's that's really it. it like some like, some of the jokes, I, I some of those those sequences actually did fall a little flat. It's just like, yeah, we get it. You guys aren't anything alike. Um, overall opinion, it's a fun and and all honestly, mostly, most not entirely, but. Mostly dumb, predictable action movie that uses the trappings of the black exploitation genre to pass along the various uh, social messages that are worked into that are worked into the story and actually do not feel crammed in. It's, it, it it works with with the story as a whole. Uh, overall rating, I gotta say, honestly, three point five out of five. I really enjoyed this movie. Um, if you're a fan of 70s black quotation films like, well, the old Shaft movies, uh, Dolmite, uh, oh, Foxy Brown, 
you'll probably really dig this. Um, anyway, that's it for now. Uh, we'll have a review of Men in Black International up uh, within the next day or so. Um, no building the team this week as it's going to be a sealed event on Sunday. So, but I may, what I'm thinking I might do is a sealed after the fact uh, with kind of okay. This is what I ran. You know, this is what I pulled. This is what I ran. This is how I did. Anyway, as always, uh, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to be notified when I put new content. If you um, if you've seen them, let me know what you think about any of the Shaft movies in the con in the comments below, um, and speak, you know below in the description box down below we it, are links to my Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off, saying, "Live long and rock hard."